The UN Development Assistance Framework process started in Kenya around June 2017. It was a protracted, multi-stakeholder, multi-dimensional process. This was not just a UN process, this was a government of Kenya-led process which brought together a variety of stakeholders from civil society to other UN agencies, to non-governmental organizations, to the private sector, but essentially led by the government. Through this framework, the UN in Kenya will in the next five years support the government of Kenya towards the realization of Kenya's Vision 2030, the medium-term Plan 3, the government of Kenya's Big Four transformative agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. This support will help the government to accelerate the country's economic transformation, contributing to an empowered, productive and healthy nation. This UNDAF has three strategic priority areas that are aligned with the three MTP3 pillars, including the political, social and economic pillars of the government's Vision 2030. The strategic priority areas include transformational governance, human capital development and sustainable and inclusive growth. This is a collective work of 24 UN agencies working in Kenya. So we are happy that uh, we are not just uh, talking, but we are also walking the talk in terms of uh, ensuring uh, realization of uh, SDGs in, uh, in our country. We have also lately uh, condensed this into a big full agenda uh, where we want to uh, look at the pillar of uh, food security, we want to look at uh, manufacturing, we want to look at uh, health, and uh, uh, housing, the right to affordable housing. So all these are areas where we are working closely uh, with the UN and uh, the UN assistance, uh, the UNDA framework has gone a long way in ensuring that uh, we are able to uh, uh, work together in terms of framing our national priorities, fitting uh, uh, very well with the, with the, with the UNDA uh, uh, that uh, is currently based on our MTP3. So, uh, so far, uh, I think we must thank uh, the UN country team, uh, led by uh, the resident coordinator, Seed, whom we worked very closely with uh, my colleague, who is a co-chair uh, of UNDAF, uh, the CS in charge of our national treasury. So we, we, we're making good progress. And uh, as we move uh, forward between now and 2022, uh, we have our plans in place and uh, we are working very, very closely with, with the UN in all these aspects. Through transformative governance, which is seen as a bedrock towards the achievement of the government of Kenya's Big Four agenda, the UN focuses on respect for the rule of law, improved security and effective implementation of devolution for a peaceful, secure, cohesive, equitable and prosperous Kenya. The UN has continued to strengthen effectiveness of the devolution process and improve service delivery while bringing governance closer to the people. The country's budget plan gives framework how the country should look for 10 years. But then in that, there are strategies on environment, agriculture, population, transport. So what we are trying to do in the GS lab is to make sure that when environment guys or environment department comes to the GS lab, they don't have to see all this uh, output of the country plan. They're interested in that environment aspect. So we can now retrieve this information, edit it to fit to their need, and then make sure that it is good, visualized for their understanding, and they can use that for planning and decision making. Like, for example, transport network. We are able to see where the road is passing and which towns it's connected. If it's actually issues of uh, economic investment, we are able to see where, in terms of in which ward, in which sub-county, or even in which village are we investing this type of investment. The county special plan, if it's, a, if it's a communicated to the stakeholders or even the general public, they can be able to see what they should expect from the government for the next 10 years. And they can now demand investment opportunities in line with that. They can demand economic opportunities in line with that. To promote peace and sustainable development, the UN has supported cross-border initiatives that aim to transform the lives of communities who historically have been marginalised. With devolution now, uh, we've ended the era of marginalisation 
where this part of arid and semi-arid lands that were underdeveloped uh, due to the marginalization uh, are now recovering because of uh, the equitable development that uh, is required uh, under our new constitution, where we now share equitably the national cake uh, to all the 47 counties so that in the UN uh, uh, spirit of leaving no one behind we want to ensure that uh, uh, marginalization ends in our country and equalization uh, it comes in and uh, we are able to uh, develop every part of our country. Recently, we went to Uganda on the 12th of September to now start a second cross-border program between uh, the Pokot, the Turkana and the Karmajong of Uganda. That is the Moroto uh, area. Uh, we are happy that we are making progress there and uh, we also want to look at the other borderlands so that we see how we can, instead of having cross-border conflict, we have increased cross-border trade and integration of uh, these uh, communities. Sisi tutafanya lorote tuwezavyo kwa kikisha ya kwamba tumelete hae maendeleo ama itaguza maisha if you don't trade, you cannot create wealth. If you do not move, you cannot create wealth. And if you don't create wealth, all you are doing is institutionalizing poverty. And we want to eliminate poverty. The UNDP has been spearheading uh, coming together of these communities to solve problems, cattle wrestling, uh, you know, attacks, common attacks between either on the other side or this side. Solution has always been found. So there's a structure, right, which uh, has got clearly set out uh, avenue of, of consultation. Regionally, the leaders on either side of the country have been able to come together and discuss the development agenda along the border. This program has enabled the leadership uh, to be able to be connected to other global uh, agendas. And they just concluded the UN General Assembly in New York. Moyale Kenya-Ethiopia cross-border initiative was the example that was quoted uh, in the world. Inclusivity and mainstreaming a human rights approach to development, ensuring no one is left behind, remains a critical component of the work of the UN in Kenya. We are very happy uh, in, uh, because of the 2019 census, uh, because we, for the first time we persons with albinism uh, have actually been counted. And this has been a journey that started way back in 2009, when we petitioned Parliament as the Albinism Society of Kenya to uh, have us counted. To support human capital development, the UN supports various initiatives to ensure that all people in Kenya, especially the most vulnerable, are educated, protected, empowered, healthy, well-nourished, have access to clean water and sanitation, and live in decent homes within resilient communities. With the support of the UN, access to quality education and lifelong learning opportunities, especially among the marginalised and vulnerable groups, including the youth, has been enhanced. In order to provide age and gender appropriate services, that's why the child-friendly space was established. Currently, we are in Furaha Centre 1. These children come from different countries. We serve children majorly from South Sudan. We have children from Congo, Burundi, um, Ethiopia, and also Eritrea, who actually some are unaccompanied minors. We have separated children, and we also have other vulnerables, and uh, including persons with disability. This is not a school. It is a child-friendly space. But with the young ones, it helps them. It gives them actually um, um, an advantage because by the time they are joining school, at least they are at a certain level. They have known even colors. They have known how to count because we have songs which we sing with them and they have 
numbers in them. It's like you are teaching literacy, you are teaching numeracy, but in form of a song. So by the time they go to school, they know how to count. We have painting whereby children hold brushes. When they hold a brush, it's like holding a pen, like this one. So by the time they join school, they know how to hold a pen because they held a brush somewhere else. My name is Ajo Kisotu, a student at Vocational Training Center, currently doing a course in engineering. I decided to take the course because I can be my own boss. My parents didn't know well about the electricity because they are not educated. They say that electricity is done by only men. They somehow became negative because they say ladies are less energetic to do such work. The encouragement from the foreign suit and the Anglo, they gained the knowledge that the genders are balanced. So they, 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 they encouraged me to do that course. I gained the skill on how to do wearing in a house. By now, I can do wearing in a house from the kikingi up to the intake until lighting. If to are not for the training, I could have been married already. Because the mass size usually say if a person is drawn with form four level, she or she might be married. I could have lack education. In the near future, I'll be my own boss, being my owning my own family, helping my siblings, and even educate my those who are in the lower background. I would like to be the first lady or the best lady in Maasai as an engineer. I would like to come back and help my family. While working towards the realization of universal health coverage, which is one of the key components of Kenya's Big Four agenda, the UN supports the national and county governments to scale up and strengthen policy legal and institutional frameworks to ensure efficiency and effectiveness in the provision of quality health services delivery. We are currently uh, on the journey of realization of universal health coverage as a country. The policies that we have developed with the support and in partnership with the, the UN agencies give us the blueprint that we utilize actually for UHC pilot level but it also gives us a very useful instrument, the monitoring and evaluation framework, which has continued to then help us monitor and pick lessons during this pilot phase. They were very supportive in terms of uh, technical assistance by bringing experts uh, who are both in country and out of country. In the work we are doing in community, the first thing in the morning we are coming to the Red Cross and we log in and we are going back to community to visit household, to identify all the cases, all the pregnancy. If there is uh, any problem, we can refer, and also we refer also this uh, postnatal. If there is a postnatal mother, we refer, and we teach them also about the uh, danger sign of the pregnancy, and then danger sign of uh, for senator. If there is any case we occur, we refer the mother immediately to all the hospital. Mama yangu alikuwa anasalisia nyumbani. Sasa hii ukoo inanyibuatiria mama alikuwa na wachichana. Lakini ili nyibuatiria kwangu. Kazi yangu hapa ni ya kusindikisha wa mama anataka kuchibungua. Mama kwa moka, wanakufa wengi, usari, utifungulia nyumbani. Mama tamu natoka nyingi, ile nyumba mtoto narara, awesi kutoka. Ukika ukati, mama ataenda, na mtoto ataenda. Ha? Diyo ikawai, nisikia maneno ya serikali ya matakitari. Tulipereko nyigori, kuenda kubundiswa. Tagitari, Anani, 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 Patia Gitabu, 
nikileta huyu mama hata akapakua wawili anachifungua ananiandikia ngine kina gato ile list na gato na wako hapa na ile ngine naenda naye kwa kitabu kitana watogo kama wameka 14 wameka 15 pana sika mimba iko sureni pana bucha kwangu pana suite koko koko nasema yeye baba e, iko na mimba iko na mimba e, mesi gani mesi nne au tatu na wasasi wanajua wasi kujua watani bugusa ina bareta hapa na baruse ina takaje taka ni kupeleke hospitali wendo pimo kila kitu pirusi kila kitu tolewa tamu kwa kwa chanjo ukue tayari uchifungue mtoto si utoe mimba ukitoa mimba ni vibaya na huwa mtu taenda kutibu wapi huyu wajitana pananyerewa panagucha kwangu ni na pepereka hapa wakati nilikuwa mimba sifu mada ilisaidia kamileta hospitali nika nikafanywa teksti nika ndikiwa kila mwezi ninaanza kuja clinic kutoka hapo sifu mada ilikuwa inanifuatilia hawa za clinic nikiwa mbwa karambe nikiwa mgonjwa na sasa nipenda hospitali kabla sifu mada ijaingia atakuwa tunasaidika vizuri kama wakati huo sawa wakati huu mtu akiwa mjamzito na kila kwa mara kwa mara wanamwangalia na wanafundisha vile wakati uko mgonjwa unazaingia hospitali ukiona dalili zingine sio nzuri na sasa hivi kuja hapo ni ndoto yangu anaitwa Uwase Tani ako na mwezi siku to address the challenges and chronic crises associated with droughts, disease outbreaks and insecurity, the UN has supported various initiatives across different counties. People from here, host Turkana, they did not know how to, how to have gardens. But because drought swept away the animals, so this is an alternative way or a source of life. We plant cowpeas, and also there is a spinach here, also there is okra, even skuma wiki you can get here, even onions you can get here, it's even tomatoes. In this community, there is what we call bamba chocola. This is the food they eat almost every day. So uh, this uh, garden has helped them to change uh, their, their diet. As they sell out, they buy other foods, and also, because of this farming, some small money will help even their children for school and medication. So what we did was, if this garden is for the host, the next garden is for the refugee. Like that, all of this, all of this water pan, it is arranged like that. We are now integrated. When right now, we are in peace. We are working to in, uh, enhance uh, capacities of uh, local communities to also move from relief food that they have been relying on uh, to resilience. We want to build uh, that resilience and the UN is a critical partner uh, through its organizations uh, like WFP and FAO. To support prevention and response to gender-based violence, including female genital mutilation and child marriage, the UN has embarked on improving structures to assist and provide GBV survivors with quality essential services, as well as enhancing the survivor's access to justice. Female genital mutilation, that is FGM, is a big issue in Migori and Kisei counties. Among the Abakuri and the Abagusi communities, we have a law that is the Anti-FGM Act of 2011. But enforcing it has become a challenge because uh, we are not getting a lot of the good reports that we want from the community that the practice is being conducted, meaning we don't have arrests. And even though the arrests are there, there is no evidence. The mobile app. Uh, according to us, is going to address the issue of reporting. We have trained the community about the effects of FGM. We have uh, identified and built the capacity of uh, 
the community monitors and FGM champions. We work with the community health volunteers. We work with the other local administrators. By using this uh, mobile app, we are anticipating a, a number of outcomes. We will have gotten a permanent, more or less like a permanent solution of reporting because uh, we'll be able to uh, estimate the number of cases that are coming from a given uh, locality and we will even be able to identify the hotspots of FGM whereby we are getting the cases from. Through the uh, mobile app, we'll be having a centralized system whereby this information will be analyzed from. While supporting the Big Four agenda of the Government of Kenya on housing, the UN is strengthening the capacity of the national and county governments to develop and implement sustainable housing policies. As a result, social physical infrastructures improve access to quality, affordable and adequate housing with a focus on informal settlements and slum upgrading. Through the UN, we have attracted uh, other key international uh, stakeholders. As you know, uh, the UN has been working closely with the UK Fund, this um, guy to support uh, the Sustainable Urban Development Programme. Uh, we have the, the French uh, agency, AFD, which is working to support the Kisumu you know, Urban Programme. Uh, and all these, and of course the World Bank, which also is very much in the you know, Kenya Urban uh, uh, Programme, in particular the Kenya Slum Upgrading Programme. So through the, the UN, uh, it has been a catalyst to bring forward all these global partners and because of that the impact has even been more significant and so we like to appreciate I think the, um, this uh, pioneering and uh, if you like leading role or by the UN through UDAF. The biggest program we are doing right now which is in uh, Ad River uh, it is through this program of UNOPS they have committed to do uh, at least 100,000 houses. This is not a program which is being planned. It's actually already started. And it has given a very big boost to the presidents, you know, a big four agenda in particular housing. If you go there, you see a lot of activity. And because of the UNOPS coming on the ground, we have now other partners, you know, coming to the housing sector. Uh, and so the intervention by, by the UN through UNOPS, this has been very timely. You also know that um, through the UN habitat, you, there is land which is owned in Mavoko by the UN, I think some 55 acres. Uh, and this we are also discussing how can it can also be developed to provide also that uh, catalyst to our drive to create more housing units for our people. To promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, the UN strengthens human and institutional capacities along the productive sectors of the value chains, such as the service sector, agriculture, manufacturing and the blue economy. By providing support to those sectors, they employ and directly support marginalised vulnerable groups, including women and youth. Ile kilimo ilikuwa ya zamani ukilima na ngombe inavaa uwe tuseme kama uko na watu kama watatu wa kupanda wa kushika hiyo hiyo plow na na mmoja wa kunini wa, wa kuelekeza hizo ngombe na sasa ukiwa na hii ni kuamka asubuhi uko peke yako ni kuamka asubuhi unalima tu tuseme kama nusuweka unamaliza na hiyo ina save time ina save money Sasa katika kikundi yetu kuna vitu ambayo tunatumia kama members. Kuna hizi zinaitwa jaka planda, unaenda unaomba kama members anakubaliwa kukaa naye wiki moja, anarutisha members nyingine anapewa na inatumianga yaani wakati wa kiangazi itumii wakati wa mfuanjo ya matope. Kwanza mimi ni mkulima wa mtama. Kwanza nilikuwa napata tu ngunia tatu ina hivi lakini nikitumia siya imeenda juu mpaka ngunia nane kwa haya kama Mashini iko pale huwa naitumia kufanya uh, leaping na hiyo machine kwa sababu nimekuwa trade na FAO 
kufanya ile minimum tillage kilimo hifadhi na wasasema iko na i produce kuliko ile ya conventional kwa sababu eh, tunatumia technology nimejua kilimo hifadhi nikajua enterprise choice nikajua mambo ya contract farming post harvesting management na hizo sote mwanzo ni sikuwa najua hapa asubuhi nikikuja vile watoto wanasoma ikikuwa break mimi nakuja tu naangalia tuko na siku yetu moja ambao tunafanya meeting kidogo tunaangalia hata kwa shamba vile naendelea kama kuko mambo ya vidudu inaelemea shamba tunaongelea na wafundisha hata vile gisi ya ku change some methods ya kulima ya kudig mambo kama hiyo na after tuna plan gisi ya quartering hata hapa wanatumia wanakula nani spinach wanaitumia wanaikula hivyo na ugali wanaifanya hata kwa kwa meeting kama ni meeting ya teachers wanaitumia atuendi kubai mali nyingine tunatumia ya kwetu serikali pia tunashukuru sababu ainge tupea mali kama hii ya shule fasi kama hii atungepata hata nafasi ya kuweka ishu hii project yetu hapa ni hii shamba ni ni kazi yetu ya kila siku ambaye e, ni imekuwa ni maisha yetu tulikuwa tukipanda tunakuja kila siku hakuna siku ambaye tutakosa kabla ya UNDP ju kuja na India mie maisha yetu ilikuwa ni ile maisha tofauti na ya sai tuko hata tunapata chakula tuko tunakosa hiyo mboka tupate pesa ama tupate chakula ya kula nyumbani ajuzi UNDP na Endemie walitichimbia ball na sola ambaye ikiendelea tukiweka wakiweka matank tutakuwa tumepanda vizuri tumekuwa tumetatua ile shida ambayo ilikuwa inatuzungua kwa hiyo shamba manufaa ya hii ya hii ball kama sisi hata community hapa tutapata maji ya kwasa ni hiyo ya pili a uh, mifugo yetu tapata maji tatakuwa inapata maji hapa alafu pia mimea yetu ambaye eh, ilikuwa inatusumbua sana mimea nayo tapata maji na itakuwa ni furaha sana na shukrani sana kwa sababu imesaidia community ya Noya wi tukilima tukilima hapa tupate kila kitu a uh, maisha hapa itakuwa nzuri sana Initially I was about a border that was my job. In 2016 we were visited by a, a team from Cliff County National Road Management Authority uh, through UNDP. The team came uh, in our group they interviewed us and after that they called us in a workshop. We were trained on how to put our records and how to we can um, start doing our projects so there we selected the brella chicken rare we have that uh, we were sponsored by 500 chicks i can say that the, the first breeding of 500 chickens we managed to sell 495 chickens so that was an excellent success for us after that the the man we got then we started breeding breeding the chickens by ourselves now the three months we had 800 chickens actually this time myself i have been able to develop my project i have 500 chickens by now the 500 chickens i managed to sell these chickens every every month the minimum profit i can get is about not less than 30000 so i can see i can uh, i can see that changes 
Well, by the time I was uh, doing Boda Boda, okay, I was able to save about 500 or 400 a day. But now, monthly, I can count 1,000 minimum, or I can get more than 30,000. Katsangani is an island that captures 13 villages in itself. Whenever you hear Tana River, there are clashes. They are not tribal clashes. They are clashes between farmers and pastoralists. Because of water, the land, pasture, and all that. As a CBO, we sat down and uh, try to look at uh, this challenge. What can we do? So we propose to go for projects that will be ensuring the community alternative livelihood. We proposed fish farming because one, we have uh, the land here. Two, we have this water right from the creek, which we don't buy to filter into the Muradi wenyewe ambao sasa ni fish farming si tumeona ni kitu kubwa shimo moja linaweza kupatikana wanyama ama samaki zaidi ya tani hata kuanzia sita kuendelea mbele ikiwa ni prawns tani sita si ni pesa nyingi ikiwa ni tilapia tukipata hiyo tani sita pia ni pesa nyingi kwa kusema kweli hiki kisiwa hata badala ya kungangana na mambo ya ngombe wala nini hii blue economy nafikiria inaweza kutufanyia vizuri sana kama ile mali ambayo iko pale ndani ni hii tu ambayo tunaitoa hapa kwa kriki tunataka tuongeze haya madimbwi ili ikifikia kama madimbwi kama kumi, maisha yetu yatakuwa mazuri sana tukifika hapa kwa madimbwi tukiuza hiyo mali ambayo iko kwa hiyo madimbwi kama ni watoto kusoma watasoma kama watoto kula watakula mimi ni mkulima wa nyuki nilianza kufuga nyuki kitambo na mizinga hii ya kienyeji ambayo ilikuwa inatupatia asali lakini ilikuwa ikipatia asali ambayo ni bora kwa sababu hii mizinga ilikuwa inachanganya asali inachanganya watoto inachanganya pollen so ikawa tuwezi pata asali ambayo inaweza meet market ya ya, ya ya kitaifa ama hata ya kimataifa wakati huo tulikuwa tunavuna asali yetu tunaweka kwa chupa hizi za pombe hizi chupa ndogo ndogo tukijaza hiyo asali napeleka naenda nikiuza barabarani huko lakini nashukuru wakati mmoja kukutana na ofisa wa livestock wakati nauza asali yangu so, aka akaiangalia kwanza alinunua chupa na akaniambia jinsi ya kuweza kuboresha hii asali ni kuingia katika ufugaji wa nyuki wa kisasa kamuuliza kwani ufugaji wa nyuki wa kisasa kuna mgada kwambia kuna mizinga ya kisasa ambayo ni ni aina inaweza kupatia asali bora ambayo inaweza kuwezesha kuuza hata kimataifa wale wa mabwana wakaja wakatupatia mizinga 20 kama kiku kama kikundi na tulipopata ile mizinga tukaiweka ilivyoingia nyuki tuliona tofauti kubwa ya ile asali ambayo tumevuna kwa ile mizinga ya, 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 ya kisasa na ile ambayo tulikuwa tunavuna ya kienyeji. Ile mizinga ya, ya kisasa tulipata asali piwa kwa sababu ile mizinga iko na chemba mbili. Kuna chemba ile ambayo inaweka nyuki na watoto na kuna chemba ile ambayo inaweka asa. Na mavuno yetu yalifanya nini? Yali double kutoka wakati ule. Kwa sababu ile asali tulikuwa tunapata tulikuwa tunapata ikiwa na asali piwa ilikuwa ina mambo ya selection. Na tulivotoa ile asali kwa soko ilikuwa inapendwa na watu zaidi na zaidi mtambo ilikuwa sasa kama nilikuwa na mizinga yangu tu kama mizinga 4 sita hivi ya kienyeji so ilikuwa ile asali nyingi mnapata labda ni kilo 40 hiyo ndio nimepata nyingi zaidi nikishauza hiyo 
ni basi lakini mizinga kivukua introduce na watu wa serikali na wa FAO nilivuna zaidi ya kilo 200 kando na zile kilo 40 nilikuwa ninapata tunaweza tunaweza kuvuna mara karibu mara nne kwa, kwa hani flow season kwa hivyo naona hapo asali mnavuna nyingi My business is here, here in Kakuma, especially Kakuma 3 reception market. The lily is something very important. Before you come to my shop, you can go to the lily app, you check it all the system in the market. You can see all the reception market, there is uh, more than 30 or 40 shops. You can choose in my shop, my shop like an Al Naima shop. When you go to Dalili, you can see Al Naima shop now selling sugar. Each kg is 100. And uh, another shop is selling like uh, 110 and 120 shilling. So you can choose which shop is good press selling today. Our business now is going up because we have a promotion. We can promote our items. I have uh, more than 100 customers using in Dalili. POS is a very important thing. It is like uh, I have a care in my shop in, the, in, in this uh, machine for the POS. There is a stock inventory. There is uh, everything in this machine. In Kenya, over 70% of the population is less than 30. It's a youthful population. The median age of Kenya is 18. We also wanted to focus on the gender dimension. Close to 53, 54% of Kenya's population is women. And if you look at nation states that have progressed, we wanted to put a particular focus on these two because ultimately when you have young people who are empowered, who are properly employed, who have opportunities, you actually start seeing social stability, you see economic growth, just the way the Asian Tigers progressed in the 60s and the 70s, and just the way that Western Europe progressed. All of this comes together is when you have a youthful population, which is in school, or it is in training, or it is gainfully employed. That is why the president of Kenya has been chosen as a global leader by the UN system, led by UNICEF on an initiative known as the Generation Unlimited. It is the unlimited potential of the youth of Kenya and of Africa, which is going to be the new segue of global prosperity, because the rest of the world is aging. Western Europe is aging. The Asian Tigers are aging. New markets have to be found. So what we are talking about is the Generation Unlimited, which blends the public sector, the private sector, UN system, civil society, governments coming together and really realizing the true economic potential of nation states. But the real drivers of that change are going to be young people. So it's not lost on anybody that young people will have to be the focus. And this is precisely what the UN Development Assistance Framework is all about. UNDP sasa walikuja, walitufusa hapa kwa jirime, tulikuwa semina hapa, kama siku tatu hivi. Indo walituambia sasa, tuende kwa group, tuitane, Ndiyo tu banke kitu gani watatu saidia. Ndiyo tuliandika gurubi yangu, tuliandika tuktuk, tukaletewa, na tuko nae hapa, inafanya kazi vizuri. Sasa hii tuktuk, vile tulipewa, sisi wakina mama tunajisaidia nae, kuna mtu tumeajiri kijana na tukodeshea kwa siku. Alafu akilete hiyo pesa, tunarekord kwa hii kitabu. Kila siku, baada wa mwezi yote tunapeleka bank. Tunaweka bank. Sasa inatusaidia sana. Sasa wengine wakina mama, mama kuna mama mgonjwa tunasaidia nayo tunachukuliwa tunapeleka hospitali. Atusemi hiyo ni kabila hiyo ama ni nini? Hiyo ni yetu na tumepewa na hiyo NDP. Hiyo sisi zote sisi watu wa msini mwili yote ni yetu. Inatusaidia hivyo. Tunataka mambo ya peace. Ndio si tunaonesha hawa picha mzuri tunashikana. Sasa siku ya group yote tarehe 24 tunakutana. Tunaenda leo hii mwezi kwa nyumba ya Gabra tunakunywa chai tuna Cheza nini tunaondoka mwezi lengine ni kwa borana ni hivyo tunashikana vizuri sana. Hii tuktuk 
tunafanya naye biashara ililete sisi yote pamoja kabila yote tunafanya biashara hatuna uchuki imetuletea maendeleo hakuna ukabila watoto wetu watasoma na hii pesa tutasaidia wakina mama ile awajiwezi wale wana nyumba tunaweza kuwajengea tuna save save hii pesa na tunapata amani to leverage on domestic financing, the UN is working together with the private sector through partnerships to complement the traditional fundraising methods. I feel that by crowding in private sector investment is where the growth potential is going to be, is where the jobs are going to be, is where the sustainability is going to be. And this is why the UN also has what is called a Sustainable Development Goals Public-Private Partnership Platform with the government of Kenya, which has close to 17 companies which have joined up. And the whole purpose is, is to co-create big ticket items, big opportunities in health, in education, in water, in uh, infrastructure, in housing, in agriculture, in order to allow Kenya to find the financing rather than the funding. So it's going from funding to financing. And this is where we intend to walk the journey with Kenya, not only for the achievement of the SDGs 2030, but to also look at the longer term of the Africa 2063 vision articulated by the African Union. UNIDO can support that kind of effort, for example, by inviting investment promotion officials to Japan, and the, uh, we conduct matchmaking with Japanese businessmen and the African businessmen or African uh, investment promotion or authority so that the, we can provide a fields of uh, the, the dialogue uh, between stakeholders. I have seen the work which has happened in the northeastern counties. I work there as UNFPA where together with the government of Kenya, the UN system, WHO, UNICEF, uh, UNFPA, together with the private sector, six companies joined actually, Safaricom, Huawei, Kenya Healthcare Federation, Merck, Philips, and, and, and basically, in a matter of three years, we were able to reduce maternal mortality ratios in counties like Mandera, Wajir, Marsabet, Namu, Isiolo, Garissa. Nobody thought it was ever possible. But here, the leadership of the, of the First Lady of Kenya has been crucial. You know, she actually created an ecosystem of change. She brought the issue of maternal health and public health from the periphery of people's consciousness right into the center of public policy. And that is why the country is making progress.